what you can see now here in front of us is what we call a load break switch in the distribution overhead lines and these switches as you can see if we could look closer here they are in a closed position these switches from its name load break switches are used to break the load or cut the circuit when the load is on and if you come closer here you can see the handle here at the bottom of the line where it's used to open to open the uh, the load now this switch could be normally closed as you can see here and let's go and have a look to another switch where it is normally open this is another load brick switch but as you can see here closer the switch is open and we call this is normally open switch so those load brick switches can be normally closed as the one we just saw or as this one normally open the question is why we need the load brick switches in the distribution system what is the difference between the load brick switch and the circuit breaker if it's intended to open the the load or open the circuit when the load is is on so if you are interested to know the answer to these questions please join me in the coming small presentation uh, hi everyone and welcome back uh, and let's answer now the three questions i have raised first question what is the difference between a circuit breaker and a load break switch why we have some of the switches are normally closed and some of them are normally open and general question what is the functionality of the load break switches in the distribution system uh, the best way to answer these questions is through a schematic diagram so let's go through this schematic diagram and try to understand uh, the functionality and the difference between the circuit breaker and the load break switch so this is a distribution system a typical distribution system and we have here two buses bus a and bus b and we have three loads load one load two and load three now we have three six load brake switches from lbs1 to lbs6 all of them are closed except lbs3 is normally open this is the only one that is open and also we have two circuit breakers a1 and b1 and this line is basically an overhead line this is a feeder overhead lines okay so basically what we have here we have load one is connected to bus a load two and load three are connected to bus b okay and load two and three they are not connected to bus a neither load one is connected to bus to bus b now although the system looks to us as a ring system but it's not an open ring it's a, sorry it's not a closed ring it is an open ring and this switch lbs3 is the one that open the ring system now why we open the ring system because that is much easier to coordinate the breaker or the protection system if a fault happened and we'll see that it will be very hard to coordinate which breaker will open first to clear the, the fault which breaker will be a backup when a fault happened so when we have what we call a radial system as we can see here the power is coming from bus a to load one from bus b to load three and also to load two it's much easier if a fault happened in that feeder breaker b1 will be responsible for it if a fault happened in the other feeder only breaker a1 will be responsible to clear it so there is no coordination problem so generally speaking you can say that we design the distribution system as a ring system but it operates as a radial system now why we have from the first beginning design it as a ring system because as we will see having this switch if we close that switch, then we have the ability to feed the loads from the other bus. And we'll see why we need that when we explain the, the fault. So this switch, the normally open switch, is very important to switch the design of the distribution system from a ring system into a radial, a radial system. 
Now the question, second question is what is the difference between a breaker and a load break switch? So imagine there is a fault happened at F1. So this F1 will be seen by the circuit breaker A1 and it will not be seen by circuit breaker B1. Why? Because this is a normally open switch. So this feeder will be feeding the power to these loads and it will not see this fault, but this fault will be seen by breaker A1. Now, the fault will be going in that feeder, in this line, until it reaches the fault. So both circuit breaker A1, load brick switch 1, and load brick switch 2, all of them, they will sense, they will feel the fault. Which one will clear the fault? Only the circuit breaker. And this is the main difference between a circuit breaker and a load brick switch. That the load brick switch, yes, it can open the system when it is energized, but only at our normal conditions. They are not designed to clear the fault. Only the circuit breaker will clear the default. So the fault will be cleared by A1. And this is a normally open switch. There is no power from both sides feeding F1. So the fault will stop. But we have a problem. What is the problem? That load one now will have no power. So how to restore the power to load one and at the same time go and clear the fault? I don't want to go and clear the fault and wait. This may take days. We don't know what's the nature of the fault and then restore the power. So what do we do? We come here and open the normally closed switch LBS2 will open that switch. So now the fault will be open from both sides. Okay. And then restore the power. How? By closing the circuit breaker that was originally open to clear the fault. Now we close A1. Once we close A1, LBS1 is normally closed. So we restore the power. But still the fault is not fit by any uh, power so we go and clear it whatever the fault is we clear the fault and then after that we can close load break switch 2. Let's see another scenario. What will happen if a fault happened at F2? So if a fault happened at F2 this is normally open so circuit breaker or uh, bus A will not see that fault. Only bus B will see that fault. Circuit breaker B1 will see the fault and it will open to clear the fault. Okay, so there's no power feeding that fault because it's open from both sides. But now load 2 and load 3 will have no power. Again, what we should do? First, we have to isolate the fault. The fault is isolated from both sides, but now I cannot energize the system. Two loads are suffering. They are not getting any power. So I come and open the normally closed LBS5. So now the fault will be open from both sides, from the circuit breaker and from the load break switch. Now it's safe to go and close the switch. Now, once you close this switch, which is, was normally open, now I have the ability to get the power from the other bus. And this is why it's important to, to design the system as a ring system, because now I can get the power from the other bus. If the system is pure radial system, whenever there is a fault, I cannot supply the power because there is no any, any other supply that can feed the load until the fault is, is clear. So this is a more reliable system. And thanks to the load brick switches, which will give us the flexibility to isolate any faulty part to open and close, connect, disconnect different parts of the power system so that we can restore the power as fast as possible to all to all the, the customers.